If this is an excellent lawsuit, but the government is so corrupt, they will not let me get an attorney. They have they enticed all locations to not give me legal representation. So, um, time I got in my car, it's uh, my supervisor stated, hey, meeting scheduled at 1 p.m. today. I need you to join, send in the link to your personal email address. She's interrupted me reporting my abuser at the police department on my day off. And she interrupted me in the CPS video. I will put it in, in the description. He has a multitude of parties. He loves to interrupt critical situations. And he has the power to abuse, so he has parties interrupt me at locations. And I used to answer the calls, but I know that he is deliberate, so I don't entertain the calls. So I told her that, because I was already out and about. I think that they're voyeurism crimes that they're getting away with. And you, like I said, you only scratch the surface. They're deliberately wanting to torture me. I don't know if they want to torture me to the degree where I commit suicide, but I can't tell you everything that I experienced because it's petty things to cop for psychological abuse. It's deliberate. That's why when I had a good day, someone would threaten me. I'd get a theft. They'd attack me. Someone would start an argument. It's deliberate for psychological torment and torture. So I told my supervisor, I said that I'm in a domestic violence crisis. My life is in jeopardy. I'm trying to get help. And there's a child abuse. By be available at 1 p.m. today and then gave me the time. So the people in my environment are to uh, told to be abusers and disregard me. This used to be the words cannot express the feeling that I had in going through this. Like I said, it has affected my speech. You know, I used to be able to effectively communicate. I have um, now started to stutter. I mean, it, people show their distress in different kind of avenues. And maybe mine isn't shown to the extreme that I have felt it. But you best believe I was tortured and, you know, terrified. And it was that, you know, it was deliberate. So... I don't know what's recorded. I thought I started recording. Then she states, um, after I say that um, the child abuse be available at the meeting at 1 p.m. today and then the date. And then I says, you're interrupting me in a crisis, a life-threatening one. And then once again, she states, links into your personal email starting at 1 so the problem of it is, is I have a multitude of parties violating me and torturing me and disregarding my life that I have to live with daily. I, I mean, you just have to see it to believe it. I'm not allowed to get any assistance, love, or support. If someone was actually going to call and uh, help me, the calls are intercepted. I don't get them. You have to see it to believe it, but I don't get my calls. That's why they want to control my experience with telling me to call these numbers because that, that, they know that they're controlling my phone and I'll never get the help. So another game that my supervisor played a multitude of times, she had me go to meetings and out of malice set me up, put me in meetings and give me links that don't work just out of malice. So I said, I can't get in. So sometimes she tried to reprimand me for not being up. This is how sadistic he is that's running the government. Some occasions she'd reprimand me and I told her a multitude of times that I could not get in. I tried to get in sometimes 10 minutes and she play games and then try to reprimand me knowing full blown well that I can't get in. He creates intentionally scenarios because it's deliberate for torture. So there's, she knows I can't get in. And then reprimands because so you're forced into abuse, emotional and psychological abuse. It's forced. But anyway, this is a video diary of the text. And, you know, this is they're getting away with it. The pastor that said he was going to call, he didn't call. The churches that got shot up, they didn't call back. The one that got shot up, the one that had the car window busted out. Um, the chaplain, none of those calls were returned. The news reporter, all of those calls are not being returned. So this is the quality of life I have. Like I said, I wouldn't fix up anything here because it's nothing to say for me. He just, he has probably has cameras in here. And like I said, I can't really discuss it because it doesn't sound, but basically I believe that they're watching me and they want to control. If I look happier, they cause conflict to keep me emotionally bound deliberately. So they see that I'm fixing the place up and it's outside his comfort level. He wants me to be tortured. He had damaged the car. Now he can just interrupt me having my job. Knowing full blown well that he's running all these locations, the police department and the government is abusing their power and forcing that these places deny me of services. 
So if I can't keep this place and then also controlling me getting a job. So, you know, and then if I don't get a job and can't, I can't get help in domestic violence, period. It's guarded. I can't get housing. I've wrote to multiple different locations for housing. I have not had any. They haven't called me. They haven't sent me letters. The government is so corrupt. If they have not intercepted the place and had them deny me services, they won't give me my mail. I've reached out to Denton, um, Dallas, um, Garland, uh, Arlington. I have not had any paperwork. No shelter would help me get on the list. They lie and, you know, say that they can't help. It's impossible. I had a person from MetroCare. As soon as I got this apartment, they tried to finally give me housing out of mouth because I had an apartment. But I know how they are, so I went ahead and did all the paperwork. They never, after they had me do all this, put up, give them all this personal information with critical information. You know, I don't know who I was talking to. They never responded back. So weeks of going back and forth with this in, individual, it was they wanted to frame me for the mental illness. So they wanted to put me on a mental illness program. So I know how my life is. So I was going to go ahead and do it because all they do is just interrupt any, you know, any support or anything for me to prosper, prosper to force me to stay in abuse. So I said, OK, I did it. I went through all the through all the hoops and they still deprive me of the services. I haven't heard from him since he got all the information. That's why I had to live in a tent. The government just blacklisted me from any help that used to come personally and interrupted even at hotel stays. This is what your tax dollars are paying for. So I, I had to ask a gentleman today, I said, can you see this channel? Because I just asked a stranger. He said, yeah, I can see it. I just asked a stranger. And I, because I, I just can't believe that people see this and I'm still going through it. So I had to ask someone, because I can't believe I've given it to church members, the FBI, people in, you know, domestic violence, and I'm still in it. So I had to flag down a stranger and say, can, can, are you able to see it? Is this really a channel on YouTube? You people can't really see what I'm going through and I'm still in it? And he confirmed, I don't know what was happening. He saw it. Apparently everybody else can see it, but I'm still in it. 